After I graduated from high school, I went to college back east. I, I graduated from Princeton University in New Jersey. And, and when I graduated, you know, I, I had a choice. And it was either stay back east and maybe go to Wall Street or come back home. And, I'm, and I came back home because I love this state. And, and it's, where I, it's where I love to be. And uh, it's, it's such an honor to be serving it in this way. Senator, because of your of your age mm -hmm. and your sexual orientation, you're making headlines. Is yes. it intimidating for you? It isn't. You know, I think that both when it comes to my age and the fact that I'm the first openly gay man uh, to serve in the legislature, you know, it's historic, you know, for our state. But what it says to me and what it's what it's what it has said to me and what I take away is uh, that that in New Mexico we care about people's character and, and we care about focusing on, on, on who, who's the best person to do the job and we don't buy into this politics of division and identity that we try to focus more on what's best for our community what's best for our families what's best for the state so I'm incredibly uh, honored to be in the Senate not as a young senator uh, not as a gay senator but as the senator for my district so as a 26-year-old uh, uh, senator, what are your interests? What, what, uh, what are the things that make you get up in the morning? Uh, are we talking professionally or are we talking what I like to do on the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything. It, well, cause... You know, it, it, is, it is a passion for public service. Uh -huh. You know, it's a passion for public policy and thinking about how we solve some pretty tough challenges and, and how you do that collectively, recognizing that we're a very diverse state and that we have to balance and weigh and serve the interests of many communities uh, across New Mexico who at times have different perspectives and opinions on how to solve the same problems. That excites me a lot, and, and it's that challenge, and, and, and being in it for the long haul for the greater good is, is so invigorating. Uh, to me uh, that you know I, I think about it and it, it's what gives me a lot of energy and what about your personal time you know I like to read a lot and uh, I like to travel and I love cooking um, mm -hmm. so I, I, I have friends over a lot for dinner <laughs> I, it's very therapeutic and calming for me uh, to cook and listen to some music and just kind of wind down from a long day so Tell me a little bit about what part of Albuquerque you are from and what kind of influences shaped uh, your decision to, to become a senator. Like, uh, you, tell me about your environment growing up in your neighborhood. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in a, a working class neighborhood, a predominantly Hispanic working class neighborhood. And people work hard and they play by the rules and it's a community of faith and, you know, just strong families that, that band together to meet some pretty tough challenges on a daily basis and, and that experience taught me a lot and it's shaped who I am and it's taught me compassion and, and, and empathy. It's also taught me the values of hard work and, and I keep going back to that because you know in this economy people are trying to hold on as hard as they can and all of our families have experienced it one way or another and some of us a lot worse than others so having grown up in that experience seeing firsthand the difficulties that my family experienced and that so many others have as well it really informs how I look at problems because I, I look at issues and I think you know is this in the best interest of New Mexico and is this in the best interest uh, for those of us who don't have a voice you know for those members of our community that that you know don't have the ability to weigh in on an issue and, 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 and aren't prominent, uh, is this in their best interest? And I think that was directly shaped by, by how I grew up. Um, by being a senator right, uh, right now and, and graduating from Princeton, uh -huh. do you consider yourself a high achiever and how, what kind of things do you uh, want to achieve in your career or how do you want to define your career? You know, I think... Uh, I leave it to my district to to assess my achievement, and 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 they're they're the they're my boss, and they'll be the ones who ultimately in four years, you know, when I'm up for re-election, will have to <laughs> will have to decide if they're happy with the job that I'm doing. But I'm trying my best every day uh, to to live up to the confidence they've placed in me. You know, right now I am focused totally on serving in this office and uh, come into work every day this session and throughout the next four years 
just realizing that it's a huge opportunity to do good, and I don't want to waste a single minute of it. Okay, and um, just two more questions. What is the hardest part of being you? Of being me? Uh, living up to uh, personal goals and and really uh, really uh, finding the time in the day and the energy <laughs> to go after everything you know and, and to really go the extra mile it's uh, I'm pretty driven I don't sleep much <laughs> because I care I care a lot so. yeah, no. You said you like cooking. Yes. What do you like to cook? Uh, I love cooking Italian food. I love cooking uh, Korean food. And uh, I love cooking, you know, favorite dinner. I'd like just, you know, salt pork, beans, and onions, just slow cooked for a couple hours. And that's good for me with some tortilla. That's, I cook that about twice a week. So. so you're like a combination of everything. <laughs> I'm a combination of everything. You got, some, you got some Asian, you got some Italian, you got some good New Mexican stuff. But uh, I love cooking. And what, what is your family background? Uh, my... Uh, professionally, or...? Uh, well, you, your uh, personal family background, oh, yeah. your family. Uh, so my, um, my uh, as I mentioned, I was raised by my grandparents, my mom predominantly, and uh, the Candelarias have been in Albuquerque for a long time. Uh, my mom and stepdad own a small business. Uh, that's located uh, just south of my district. Uh, we own a marble company that manufactures uh, cultured marble and granite, and we install that in homes and, and in different uh, office spaces, etc. Uh, I have a sister and a brother, and I have three nephews and a niece, and my grandparents unfortunately passed away. My grandma died in 2008, uh, but uh, we're a very close family, and uh, I really am proud of the business my parents have built and that they're able to employ so many members of our community. Um, do they call you Senator now? No, they call me Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Jacob. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my last question, yes. what would you uh, want to tell uh, young, young kids that may one day um, aspire to be politicians? And why is it, why is it a, a, a good career? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a great career because for me, it's about public service, you know. I think that you know there's a difference between running for office and the politics, and then there's governing, and there's doing the people's work, and there's something noble in that, and there's something amazing about it that, as a country, we don't look to other people to tell us what to do or to govern us. We have the responsibility and the opportunity to to chart our own destiny, to make our own laws, to to shape our own society. Uh, to anybody and to young kids especially, I think that anything's possible in New Mexico and in this country, and I firmly believe that, you know, regardless of, of, of poverty or sexual orientation or gender, uh, we need to live up to the commitment that in this country, uh, regardless of who you are, uh, you can live the American dream, and we've got to keep that alive, because I think that the number one thing that, that kids need is hope that they can achieve their dreams and that there will be people along the way to support them. And I'm, I'm committed to doing that in this office and to using uh, whatever uh, is at my disposal to, to support uh, youth, especially youths in our, in our underprivileged communities. Mm -hmm. Why, as a, uh, how come you decided to, to be open about your sexual orientation? What motivated yeah. that decision? Because I think you just need to be honest with people. You know, I, I, I was asking and, and have asked, you know, 48,000 people in this state to trust me, to represent them and their families and to look out for their best interests and to do what's best for this state. And I just think if I'm asking them to place their trust in me, I should be honest with them about who I am. And I'm not ashamed and I'm, I'm proud of who I am and, you know, it is a part of me, uh, but I want to be judged on my actions, on my character. 